Welcome to our Marketplace Store at CBA 15, Unlocking Climate Finance for Locally-Led Action in the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us. My name is Anika Grandison, and I'm Senior Technical Officer and Resilience Lead with the Caribbean Natural Resources Institute, or CANARI for short. I would like to take a few minutes to present findings from a project funded by the Green Climate Fund on enhancing Caribbean civil society's readiness and access to climate finance, which is being implemented by Canary and national authorities from Antigua and Barbuda, Belize, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and Suriname, with technical support from the International Institute for Sustainable Development and Climate Analytics. So why unlock climate finance for civil society organizations, or CSOs? Well, CSOs, including national, NGOs, and community-based organizations, play a unique and important role in locally-led climate action as part of a whole-of-society approach. They help increase resilience through project advocacy and awareness-raising efforts, connect communities and governments, amplify and advocate for community voices, ground truth local climate change realities, and extend government capacities to implement local projects. So our assessment, looking at the state of CSOs in the Caribbean community or CARICOM region, and their access to and delivery of climate finance, involves desk-based research, interviews with key CSOs, government agencies and funders across the region, development of a database of CSO-led climate change projects and key stakeholders, and validation of findings and recommendations at a recent regional dialogue in March 2021. Based on our scoping, we identified 40 climate change focused projects led or co-led by Caribbean CSOs since 2017, including 20 adaptation and 20 mitigation projects, and three that were cross-cutting. This is by no means an exhaustive list, as we only focus for this graphic on recent projects with grant funding of US $50,000 or above. As you can see, the Jeff Small Grant Program was one of the main funding sources and broadly seen as an effective mechanism for providing smaller amounts of funding that suit the needs of many small CSOs at the community level. This was seen as a model worth replicating by the other climate funds, which have recently begun piloting enhanced direct access involving small grants to CSOs and other actors. So what is specifically stopping CSOs in the Caribbean from accessing more climate finance. Through our assessment, a number of key barriers emerged, including their small size and limited geographic focus. This also typically means limited staff of less than 10, and there is often high staff turnover. In working on smaller local projects, CSOs on average are operating with annual budgets of US $250,000 that are much smaller than the minimum level of funding offered up by international climate funds like the Green Climate Fund and the Adaptation Fund, where grants for full projects start as high as US $10 million. There are also capacity constraints in terms of financial management, reporting, auditing, which are key requirements for funders. There's limited awareness and understanding of climate finance options limited proposal development capacity and experience. And on top of this, there are onerous application processes for many of the international climate funds, which can be a key barrier. Further, government engagement with CSOs on climate action is often ad hoc based on personal connections rather than established structures. So how can we improve Caribbean CSOs access to and delivery of climate finance to scale up their impact based on our assessments. While we can ensure CSOs are engaged in a full project cycle from project design to implementation and monitoring and evaluation, 
This will allow government and their implementing partners to tap into greater expertise and local knowledge, expand capacity to implement work on the ground, and broaden networks of communications and knowledge sharing. We also need to improve readiness and capacity building support for CSOs to strengthen their human resources, policies, and systems to deliver climate finance, including financial management and procurement that are critical for accessing further financing. We need to expand small grant mechanisms, which are specifically designed to cater to the needs of CSOs operating at the local level to help ensure that funding is available for delivering meaningful climate action, building on the successes and lessons from the Jeff Small Grant Program and enhance the role of local intermediaries, including regional and national CSOs, in these mechanisms to better channel finance to the local level for community-based organizations and other actors. We also need to facilitate integration of citizen science and local indigenous knowledge to help improve access to information on local climate change impacts and viable solutions to strengthen the climate rationale of projects and inform actions. And we need to better support CSOs to play a key role in this process. It's also clear from the assessment that all partners would benefit from strong coordination mechanisms between CSOs, government agencies, and funders at the national and regional levels. Through this, we can ensure civil society has the funds and other resources it needs and can effectively tackle the climate crisis and build local resilience alongside